Let's look at consistent naming in Dart. We have a folder which is called page and inside of it we have a file called home screen and this class is called home. As you can see, all these three names, the class name, the file name and also the folder name are not consistent at all. Let's first of all look at the folder name. We call it, for example, page. You can call it screen, whatever you like. However, you need to make sure that this name, the file name itself is then consistent. So if you call the folder page, then you also call the file homepage instead. And finally, the file name and class name should be also consistent. So if our file name is called home page, then also our class name should be called home page. Let's look at a second example. Our folder is for example called screen, then the file name should be not home page, it should be home screen, so that the folder name and also the last part of the file name matches. And finally, the file name and class name should also match. So this is called home screen, therefore also our class name should be called home screen. Let's also look at another example. We have a folder where we place all our widgets inside and the file name is camera and this is not so great. First of all, it should not be in uppercase. So all the letters should be in lowercase so that we use the snake case notation. And then it should also have a postfix of widget so that the file name postfix matches with the folder name. And lastly, we need to make sure that the file name matches with the class name. And as you can see, the file name is camera widget and the class name matches with it. It's also called camera widget. Let's also look at model classes. For model classes, we usually don't want to have a postfix of model because it makes the name too long. We want to have a really short and precise name. And since this class name is called user, therefore also our file name should not be called user model. It should simply be called user. Next, we want to make our code consistent. So here we have some class fields and as you see, our first class field is called button child. And this is not really consistent with the Flutter API because all of the parameters in the Flutter API are called child. And therefore we shouldn't give it a prefix button. We should simply call it child. Next, we have the button style class field. Here we also shouldn't call it button. And this is because first of all, if you have something like this, then make sure to write it correctly so that everyone can understand it. And secondly, our widget is called button widget so we already know that it is the button and therefore it is obvious that it will be a button style. For this reason you can simply call it style. Next we have the button width and button height class fields and here it is again obvious that we shouldn't give it a prefix of button since this information is already inside of our widget name and therefore this information would be simply redundant if we put it again inside and we can simply remove it. There's also a second reason why we should call it not button with. Let's go down to our implementation. Here you see that we use the button with with an a property called with. And for this reason, it is more common that you also name this than with. And the same thing applies for the height. Our property is called height and therefore make sure that you call it height instead, which is also shorter. So width and height are some common names and you can then also rename here fields at the top. So first of all, we call it width and the button height name we exchange by the name height. Let's also look at the on clicked and on long tapped class fields. First of all, the naming looks okay. However, if you go down, then you see that we use the on clicked field for a property which is called on tap. So this is not really consistent. Therefore, let's copy the on tap name and let's put it to the right side. Here you can use the simple present or you can also use a past tense. That's basically the same. We use the past tense and then we go here to the top and let's rename the on clicked field to the on tapped field. And finally, let's also look at the on long tapped field. Here, as you can see, it is called on long press as a parameter. And therefore, it is again not matching with the name on the right side. Let's simply copy this name and place it to the right side. And again, I want to give it a past tense and I copy this name. Then we go up and we also exchange then the name of our class field. Consistent naming should be applied everywhere. So if our class field is called page count, then our message shouldn't be called renumber pages and our parameter not new pages. Let's first of all look at the method name. It's called renumber pages. 
And here you could always make sure to give it a simple name, so renumbering is not really powerful. Instead you could for example call it update pages, which is easier to understand. However, if you now look at the class field and the method name, you see they are not yet consistent. Therefore instead of calling update pages, you also want to call it update page count. So let's change it like this. And for the parameter, we also want to make it consistent with our method name, page count therefore let's call it not new pages, instead we can call it page count. This is the thing what we want to update. Alternatively to page count, you could also give it another name because books have usually a lot of pages and therefore you could also simply call it pages. And this would make the naming also really easy to understand. Next to consistent naming, we should also look at how we name our variables. We shouldn't use unfamiliar words, instead try to use like easy recognizable words. So instead of monograph, we could for example call it text and everyone will easily understand it. The same works also for other names such as class names. Here don't use this unfamiliar word Cartesian. Instead call it simply point and everyone will understand it easily.